Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on my review of The Road to June by Frank Herbert, Brian Herbert, and Kevin J. Anderson. Um, so this is basically, it's kind of a companion book. It brings together some of the unpublished stuff of Frank Herbert's that was never used, and then has like additional stuff from, um, from Brian and Kevin as well. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs before I share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. The companion to the best-selling series. Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson told the story of the years immediately before June began in the three volumes of Prelude to June. In Legends of June, they turn to the historical background of Frank Herbert's universe. Now, in this new book, they take the reader to the creation of the June novels themselves. The Road to June includes passages dropped from the original June and June Messiah by Frank Herbert, as well as letters about its original publication. And for their own readers, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson have written four original short stories in Spice Planet, a new short novel based directly on an outline by Frank Herbert. Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson have crafted an unputdownable collection, from the notes, outlines and correspondence Frank Herbert left behind on his death, from the conversations and brainstorming sessions between Frank Herbert and his son Brian, and from their own stories and characters in Prelude to June and Legends of June. So, let's get started. And this was some interesting context from the foreword here, about how Frank uh, kind of approach time management, I guess. Frank Herbert had more fun with life than anyone I've known. He laughed more, joked more, and produced more than any writer I've ever met. With modest beginnings just across the Puyallup River from my own birthplace, and passionate about outdoor life, he judged people by their creativity, and by whether they met hardship with humour or with bile. Humour helped him to endure hardship and to enjoy his rise above it. Frank believed the suffering in the Garrett stereotype was foisted onto writers by publishers so that they could get away with small advances. The only true currency that Frank recognised was time to create. Everything and everyone fell into two rough categories for Frank. It, he, she either contributed to his writing time or interfered with it. I've always had pretty much the same attitude. So this is uh, the foreword written by Bill Ransom who co-wrote with uh, Herbert. And so the publishers wanted to give Ransom 25% and Frank 75% but Frank insisted that half the work earned half the credit and half the pay. Um, and Ransom says, I learned from him that authors exist merely for the story's sake, not the other way around. And a good story had to do two things, inform and entertain. The informing part must be entertaining enough to let readers live the story without feeling like they're on the receiving end of a sermon. Writing entertainment without information, without some insight into what it is to be human, is a waste of good trees. So I want to move on here to uh, Spice Planet. Is it called Spice Planet? Yeah, Spice Planet. Um, and this was just really interesting. It's kind of like a what if, like what would have happened if Herbert had followed his original outline. It's kind of weird reading it. It's like an acid trip or something because everything's familiar and yet different at the same time. And so here we have uh, Dorothy, which is like the prototype for Jessica. And she's talking to Jesse, who's the prot prototype for Duke Leto. And she says, the day's work will never be done, Jesse, nor tomorrow's. Don't think of it as an individual task to complete. Each day here is a continuing struggle, a marathon race that we must win. And I just thought that was an interesting way of looking at life. One I should probably try and apply myself. And as always, the story starts with like quotes at the beginning. And I thought this one was pretty good from Unfinished Poetry by Gurney Halleck, who is the same in, in this and the, the later books. The purpose of night is to prune the limbs of yesterday. So I want to skip on to the road to June. I mean, Spice Planet is the first half of the book, really. Um, and then later on, we get some of these letters that, that Frank wrote. And I want to read some excerpts from those. And so here's a letter that he received, and obviously we know how this turned out. July 29th, 1957. Dear Frank, control of sand dunes may be a story. It is fairly limited in appeal, but certainly worth trying if you'll make your outline a little more detailed. You should put it on a page without any date, just an outline, and give me answers to the questions I've written along the margins. We should also know how widespread the use of this grass is now and how rapidly it is being multiplied. And we learn that Frank actually decided to revive Duncan Idaho in the later novels because the fans liked him so much, so that's how the goal has happened. Um, and uh, Brian and Kevin note, the Dune universe would be much poorer without Alia Atreides and the serial goalers of Duncan Idaho. So we learn as well uh, that the original books were published by Chilton Books, who are best known for publishing auto repair manuals. And they offered $7,500 plus future royalties. And then we get to some of the short stories, uh, the new chapters and short stories. So we have Blind Paul in the Desert, the original ending to Dune Messiah. And I just like the opening to this original ending here so abruptly he sat up looked around him in the green gloom of the still tent the frem kit pack lay at his feet he felt contained by the tent and these few possessions the frem kit held his attention such a small pile of human artifacts they were though part of his ability to stay alive in this place it was very curious a great deal of death had gone into the experience which had created these few things, yet they represented life. He considered abandoning some of the items in the kit, 
Which ones, he wondered, might prove most definitely fatal by their absence? The Baradai pistol? He drew it from the pack, tossed it aside. Not the pistol. Why should he want to lay down a marker pattern in the sand, a visible call for help? And this was just a cool fact as well. For a few minutes he listened to and identified the night sounds around him. This desert teemed with life which had adapted to it. He had not adapted. His body was mostly water. That water was a poison which could sicken a worm. If a worm devoured too many men, it died. I had not thought of that, but true, it would do. And then we have a story as well called The Faces of a Martyr, a tale of the butler in Jihad. And uh, was it Omnius thinking this? Um, anyway, um, the question gets asked, is it more human to be good or evil? And arguably they're both human, you know? But yeah, The Road to June by Frank Herbert, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. I'll be honest, most of this, uh, the value comes th from this comes from uh, Spice World. Is that what it's called? Or is that just the name of the movie with the Spice Girls in it? Anyway, that's where I got, I took the most away from this. Spice Planet, there we go. And it's about 200 odd pages, so it makes up the bulk of the book. I mean, the whole thing's about a bit less than 400, so about half the book goes to that kind of novella, which was really fascinating to read. Uh, the rest of the stuff was interesting enough, but it does definitely much read like a, just a collection of different bits and pieces um, that's almost been to, you know, pulled together as an afterthought, you know. But overall, I did enjoy The Road to June by Frank Herbert, Brian Herbert, and Kevin J. Anderson. I would give it like a 3.5 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Road to June by Frank Herbert, Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like video, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.